डियर भिवर्स स्वागत जाना कुकारी थिएटारे आजकल अतिथि मास्टर शेफ टू थाउजेंड टुएल्व उनार सेलिना पार्मालो आसन देखी उन्नी आज की देखा So I'm going to cook three dishes hopefully. Yeah. I'm going to do one savory dish and then two sweet dishes. Cool. Um they're both from my two different cookbooks. So I need to ask you can we can talk about that. I'll start chopping first. I always get conscious of time when I'm doing these things. So while you're busy doing these things, can you still talk while you chop? Yeah, 100%. Can you make sure that your fingers fall off or something. No, to be honest with you, when you do something like master chef, you learn how to be able to talk <laughs> and cook at the same time. It's all right, don't worry. <laughs> okay. So the first dish I'm going to cook is a, is it, are any Mauritians here? Yay! I love people. Keep on here. Go back. Beautiful. Okay, so you're going to laugh at my dish. I'm going to cook what we would classify as like a pauper's dish. Egg rogai. Is this favourite? Oh, okay. So egg rogai is basically, um, it's an egg dish, but you make like a really thick chilli tomato base and then you crack the eggs. Traditionally in Mauritius, they actually scramble the eggs. Um, I just kind of made it slightly differently, but you can do it how you like, basically, but the flavour's still the same. Um, what I love to do is basically, my heritage is Mauritian, so I was born actually in Southampton, so I had a choice of choosing a Southampton food culture on MasterChef or maybe Mauritius. So I chose Mauritian food. <laughs> and um, for me, Mauritian food is really beautiful. It's not really known much in the UK. Um, and it's a real mix. So for anyone who's not Mauritian, Mauritian food is African, Indian, Chinese, and French. So you're uh, half? Is it half from Kenya, half from Tanzania. Okay, so, so your mix. curries, in fact, are quite similar to our curries. So as kind of basically people have moved around and you know things get changed in Mauritius, we don't have like a classic curry. It will be more fragrant. I would probably liken it more to like a South Indian style more curry leaves, more fenugreek seeds, more coriander seeds. Um, and it's, we don't use loads of ghee, it's quite light. Um, because there's so many really strong food cultures. Chinese, Indian, Russian, there are really strong food cultures. Yeah, they are. So, how did that happen? Why? Why is it? So the island was like, literally only had dodos on it. It was like a proper <laughs> island. It's a volcanic island. Wow, I'm like a science teacher here. So. Millions of years ago, a volcano erupted in the Indian Ocean and it left all these little islands. So there's Madagascar, there's the Maldives, and then there's Mauritius. So Mauritius is a collection of islands in the Indian Ocean and it had no inhabitants. So people came there to claim their stake. So the Dutch came, the Arab came, the Portuguese came, and each time everyone came, they left with them something. So the Portuguese brought with them deer. So we eat lots of venison, we call it self. It's self, isn't it? Um, I'm just looking at my Mauritian piece to make sure I'm saying it in the right, <laughs> the right way. Um, we speak Creole, which is uh, pigeon French. So it's like broken French. It's kind of similar to like, I don't know, how Jamaicans speak English. Yeah? So Mauritius, because of that, has a really interesting food culture. And the people are really diverse as well. We have a real mix of people. Um, and so this dish, as far as I understand, would have traditionally have been French and African. So we've started off with onions and I've added salt at the beginning with the onions so it helps it sweat and it helps to get the water out. I'm just going to just chop up some garlic. This is quite fresh, this garlic, and it's quite young. You'll know the difference. It's normally in size um, and the fresh ones stick. They're a bit harder to peel. So I'm just going to add the garlic in and then we're going to go in with lots of thyme. So thyme is quite a European herb, but we use a lot of thyme in Mauritian cooking. So I'm going to add thyme and I'm going to use some coriander stalk, okay? So, yeah, the stalk has got so much flavour and it's quite, it's quite hard, so it won't break down at this stage and then I use the leaves right at the end. So I'm just going to chop in around three tablespoons of coriander stalk, thereabouts. That's going to go in. So it's becoming, it's really fragrant now, you can kind of really smell. And then normally I would use like a, a mini microplane, I think they're called. You know the ones that you uh, grate parmesan and nutmeg with? I always use that to grate my garlic and ginger. My tip is, 
Whenever you're using it for savoury, never use it for sweet again. So if you've used it to grate garlic and ginger, don't use that to grate nutmeg over a pudding. Tainted. Yeah, it will be. So I'm just going to grate about that much ginger into it. And I always keep the skin on. The skin is full of like really good health benefits. It's like high in antioxidants and stuff. So keep the skin on. So I'm just going to shove that in. Thank you very much. And then I'm just going to use maybe half a tin of tomatoes. And all I need to do is basically reduce this down now so it starts to get nice and thick. So really it's like a, a bit of a spicy chili tomato sauce. That's kind of the base. And then I've got three chilies. I like chili, so I'm just putting those in. And that's it basically. That's like the beginning of a rog eye. Now you can either keep it like this and have it plain. Uh, in Mauritius you can pretty much use that as the base and then you add lots of stuff to it. Stuff. Like you can add prawns at the end, so it could be a king prawn. Yeah, you can add meat to it as well, but generally speaking, we either do it with egg, we do it with corned beef, which is quite traditional, um, and then we also do it with prawns. So the rog eye is your base, but it's such a good flavoured base, so that's it. I'm just going to let that cook away, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of black pepper as well, if I can open it. Just a pinch, and that's that's literally it. We just let that, let that cook for a little while. Okay. Cool. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to turn that down now slightly. And then I'm going to go on to two puddings, okay? So I'm basically going to do like a naughty and nice type pudding thing. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a naughty pudding first because, you know, you kind of need some naughty things. And it all starts off with double cream. And basically this is going to be a mango and lime syllabub. So I'm going to take some lime some lime zest into this bowl. This is what the cream's gonna go into. And there's quite a nifty trick after I've managed to do this bit. Do you mind giving this a bit of a roll? And yep. When you roll it, it releases the juices so it's easier to cut and you get all the juices out of it. Or if you've got no arm strength, you can pop it in the microwave for eight seconds. Don't go over 15 seconds or it'll blow. I've, I, I've done that before. Eight seconds is like, kind of like the good part. So okay, get enough less. So yeah, just a little roll and then we're just going to squeeze the juice into there. And I always chop my lime at an angle because it allows you to get all the segment, all the juice out of all the segments more easily. Okay, so let me just chop up this mango as well. So all I'm going to do is literally just take a few segments of mango, just chop that up a little bit. I don't know if you can see how, how you're chopped up. So I've just kind of chopped the cheeks off. So split it that way. The stone runs right through the middle. That bit normally goes to my mum and she just sucks on it. <laughs> and then I'll scoop this out. But the first thing I want to do is get our cream and pop that in there. So you can see that's just double cream and lime juice. And something quite wonderful happens if it always, yeah, that's it. So what's happened is it's, it's gone really, really thick, yeah? And all that is, is it's curdled, kind of technically that's what's happened. And then I'm just going to fold in the cubes, ma cubes of mango. They're going to go in. So in here we've got lime juice, lime zest, we have fresh mango, and then a little bit of expense. And in Mauritius we grow our own vanilla. We also get the vanilla from uh, Madagascar. So the best way to get the seeds out of a vanilla pod is flatten it using the back of your knife. Just flatten it that way, okay? Holding like the actual top of the pod, okay? And then you're gonna slice it down the middle, so length, lengthways. So you know when like all the cookbooks, they say slice a vanilla pod like that, that's what you need to do. And then you're just gonna, using the tip of your knife, grab the black seeds. And whatever's left, because there's still so much left in here, just shove that in your sugar. Or if you're making mocktails, you can shove it in like the, sh the syrup for the mocktails. And then I'm just going to mix that in as well. It's a teeny amount of vanilla. Yeah, it's quite a lot for what we've got. Um, and to that we want to sweeten it. And Ali nicked my icing sugar icing before. Sugar. So pretend that has icing sugar in it. I'll go find it. Do you mind? It's just so just to sweeten the cream a little bit, we're just going to add some icing sugar. And then here... You, get them, you can get them in smaller tins, but this is Alfonso mango puree. And I'm literally just gonna fold in like two tablespoons. 
Thank you. Lovely. And we'll just open this up. So while it's done, you said a bit of mango pulp. Yeah, mango pulp, a bit of icing sugar to sweeten it. Mm -hmm. yep. So I've got some. That'll do. Okay, so in here I've literally, I'm just going to make a simple sugar syrup. So it's about 100 grams of um, unrefined sugar. And then I've just added about a cup of water, so around 250 mils. And then I'm just going to open this. Yeah, very delicately. <laughs> Let's take this as well. Just pick it out. That's <laughs> really, it's meant to be like crumbled. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to go at this, okay? okay. Best thing, just, just go, just, just crumble, it's fine. Or we'll use a rolling pin or think of someone you don't like. <laughs> okay. I'm just too relaxed right so now. So all you're thinking of is like a crunchy biscuit base with a bit of texture, that's pretty much it. So. And these are ginger biscuits, did I read that right? They should be. Okay. Yeah. I think so. I use ginger biscuits because mm -hmm. they kind of got, already got the flavor in them. Flavor, yep. I'm just gonna make up one actually, because I don't think I'm gonna be able to make up so as you can see I've got bits of like crumb and kind of larger bits as well okay and then I'm just gonna spoon in this lovely set cream just like that oh that's pretty it's actually a, like a hefty portion this isn't for one really it could be actually I could eat that yeah yeah I was gonna keep on going <laughs> <laughs> okay so and then I'm just going to top it with a bit more fruit as well. And then some mint. So, got some mint here. Got some fruit. Just like that. Super easy. Basically, if you kind of, if you don't like mango and lime, which I can't imagine anyone wouldn't, but if you don't, you can just use other flavours. So the base of it is kind of the same. Yep. So you set your cream. You can do the same thing would work if you use lemon as well. So you could make a lemon syllabub and then you could maybe use apple and pears or anything else. Basically you can kind of pick a fruit and just do the same thing but with different fruit. Pretty much, yeah. Nice. Um, and usually I would use desiccated coconut. But I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use some almonds on top. And that just adds another dimension of like texture basically. It's good crunch. So that's it, that's a mango and lime syllabub. Easy. There we have it. That okay. actually kind of looks like maybe we could do that at home. <laughs> there you go, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I have to try and figure this one out again. That should be fine because it's on. That one's on, and I'm then... put this one on. If you, put, if you press that one. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. So there I'm just going to put that back up so for the egg roll guy. So I'm bringing that back up to heat, and then all I'm going to do now is crack in three eggs which are here straight into the pan straight into the pan and then i'm going to put a lid straight over it grab your lid thank you that's it is that the lid big enough i think it's the biggest one perfect and we're going to literally let that poach so it will take around three minutes okay. and then that's done so, so the you were saying they, they scramble it you're just Traditionally, they scramble it at this stage and then that's it. Mm -hmm. So in here, the other pan, remember I've got sugar and water boiling away. And to that, I'm going to add some ginger. So kind of some big sliced bits of ginger. And I'm also going to add some black peppercorns, okay? So I've made a massive mess here. I'm going to move stuff around. So we've got some space. So, need that. so the black peppercorns are going in. Just like that, and they're going to soften as they boil. And then I also do need to bash some as well. I think you should do crash. the bashing this time. <laughs> easy, I just can't bash hard enough. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I can't think of anything like heavy enough to use. Uh, so you want to bash inside this bowl? Nice. Mm. Do you want to use any more? There's pestle and mortar around here. Pestle. Does anyone bring a pestle and mortar? Does anyone got one in their handbag? Anyone? No. Don't carry it around in your handbag. Thank Ooh, you. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Right, okay, so now I'm a bowl and a random. It's gonna. I don't know if it's gonna work, is it? Oh, oh, the oh that way. Oh, there you go, okay. There you go. Is that work? Feels like a MasterChef challenge. In yeah, fact, actually, actually, they sent us to Cumbria in MasterChef, and we had no kitchen equipment. And literally, I was trying to um, crush um, hawthorn berries. Oh my 
god. And I was like smashing them and I was I was literally on the floor and I got loads of people on Twitter going, she looks like a native. <laughs> like it was actually quite funny. So yeah, let's smash that slightly. Okay, that's that'll do. So we've lost a few peppercorns in the process. We have. But we have enough. So there was a black plate that I did take out as well. A black plate? Yeah, like a big Yeah, like nice a serving that. plate. Do you know which one it is? Nigel, okay, so it saves the day. <laughs> it's his stage. It is, it is. So that's the one pudding there, and then the next pudding that I'm gonna do is all these ingredients make the pudding. So I'm gonna literally slice some melon, just lengthwise, just like that. It's quite thin. Yeah, quite thin. I feel like there's a, that's like chef's technique there. I don't think I could get it that thin. I think it's just it's quite amazing. Yeah, just be careful when you're doing it. They're quite slippery. Perfect. That's it. Thank you. So I'm just going to chop these up. And then do you mind opening the strawberries for me? And then yep. I can cut some of those as well. So you've done a lot of um, foodie television, I think. Yeah, there so I've done... There was there was good food. Yeah, so in terms of TV, I've done the Food Network. I've done quite a lot of their kind of Christmas shows. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've done um, Sunday brunch this morning and then the most recent one was Lorraine. They sent me over to Mauritius to go and film. I had three days to film eight mini episodes and as soon as I arrived the plane wouldn't be, wasn't able to land because there was a tornado. Oh my god. And um, if you ever watch any of the footage I've got like a head wrap because it was so windy that my hair was flying about everywhere and I was actually just being blown off. And they, you know, everyone wants to film on a beach. Yes. But the beach during kind of cyclone period in Mauritius is like the worst place to film. And um, they were like, quickly, quickly, come, because we can see that like everyone in Mauritius is like the master of um, the weather. You know, everyone knows what's happening with the weather. They can kind of, I don't know, put a finger in the air and they're like, the cyclone's coming. You know, you've got like <laughs> 30, know. 30 minutes. So we had a, like literally everyone around me, I was trying to cook and then all the locals were like, oh, the cyclone's coming. She's only got 20 minutes left. And lo and behold, I literally only had 20 minutes left before oh it like... But yeah, so I did eight mini episodes. That was quite hard. Um, and also during cyclone period, you don't, you aren't able to fish. It's really hard to fish because mm -hmm. it's so, yeah. so windy. Um, but one of the dishes meant that I needed to go and collect a local um, red, red fish, okay? So we had to kind of fake a scene where I went down to the local fishing village. <laughs> And the guys were like, you're not going to find fish. I was like, I know, can you just, like, just help me out? Just, just give me a bag. Just on TV. <laughs> I was like, they'll pay you at the end. And they did, like, the guys. <laughs> and um, so anyway, what we did is we took the fish from the, the hotel with us, like a whole fish. <laughs> and I went on a boat, and then I was like, oh, did you just catch that today? And they were like, just staring at me. <laughs> they gave me the fish, and then I walked away. But on the actual TV, it looks like I bought it from them. That's but fantastic. Anyone in Mauritius would see that it was like grey and overcast. No boats were in the sea. These Mauritians were looking at me, thinking, "What is going on here?" So yeah, that was quite funny. I need to rewatch that episode just to see you know, what, what it looked like. I might even post it up after today. Yeah, seriously, so please do. See. Where will you post it up? Um, I can put it on my Instagram. So Instagram. actually, yeah, I can What's put it. What's your Instagram name? Shalina Cooks. Shalina Cooks. So Shalina Cooks will be able to see her fake fish. And my fake fish. Well, it's a real fish. It's just fake fishing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's done, and that's done. So let's just pop that here. And my syrup is done as well. So look at that steam. Can you see the colour of the syrup? It's gone like it's a like nice yellow. kind of golden yellow. It's actually gold. A little close up. There you go. So that's literally just ginger, black peppercorns, um, sugar, and then we need some lime as well. The acidity with the lime and sugar just makes it for a really good dressing. So generally speaking, you're going to want to um, let the syrup cool down completely before you serve it, but obviously this is real time. So I'm just going to take my bits of melon. And it's mostly about presentation, to be honest with you. So this is going to end up being a melon strawberry salad with mint. So right now you're just covering it with melon. Just covering mm -hmm. the plate with melon. And then I've just got my strawberries, which I've just chopped into different kind of shapes. That's it. And then a couple of whole ones. Just like that. And I'm going to grab some mint as well. Just the really nice little bits at the top. 
and then just throw those over. The little bits just because you want them smaller or do they taste different? They're sweeter in flavour but they're also like nicer for presentation. Mm -hmm. So you can just grab a few of those, just like that. Is and this for one person too? I would probably go for like the whole melon and a whole box of strawberries for okay. a family of ten. Perfect. Okay, oh, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> no. I'm really bad. Do you ever cook for just one person? You know what, it was so funny, when I did MasterChef, um, I remember actually, one of the biggest issues with me, and, and actually coming from like an ethnic background, being a woman, we, know, we don't know how to cook for one, and everything we do we cook for like 10 to 15 people. Mm -hmm. um, so I was cooking up a fish curry, and they kept on saying I've got to make my food look better and be better presented. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to make a fancy curry like a fancy pants curry. So I made everything, and then I thought I'm gonna put like a curry smear and a jus over the top. Nice. But in order to make the curry, I had to use like a 10 litre pot to make it, because I don't know how, I didn't know how to make curry without it being like five onions and yeah. you know, 10 cloves of garlic and stuff. So I cooked it up, and I remember John and Greg were eating it, and then John had like a, like a film of um, wetness in his eye, looking like he was gonna cry. And I was like, what have I done wrong? And he was just like, everything is perfect, it's exceptional, but I want your curry sauce in that pot behind you. <laughs> and it was like this massive cauldron of bubbling curry. Um, so yeah, that was basically what happened. Okay, so I'm just going to take some of this jus. Can you just spoon again? So the syrup. Yeah. I'm literally just going to pour this over. So this is still warm? Yeah, this is warm. You would, you would want it to be cold, basically. You smell that already. It's really lovely. And then I'm just going to grab some of the ginger as well. So I think it looks really nice. And actually, if you want to eat it, it's just good for you, it's fine. And then, remember the... Um, Bashed up black pepper. Oh yes. So I know it sounds a bit random having pepper and ginger for a pudding, but there's a classic pairing of strawberries, black pepper and balsamic vinegar, which works so, so well. And this is kind of quite similar in that respect. So I'm just gonna pop that back on there. And that's my black pepper and ginger syrup with melon and strawberries. Got my mango and lime syllabub, which is there as well. I'm gonna pop that there. And then finally, so this is our egg rog eye, which you can just serve with some, some if, you've, if you've cooked roti, then eat it with roti, or you can have it with tortilla. Mm -hmm. And that's all been cooked, and that's it. Those are my three dishes, so you'll find this, these two in sunshine and on a plate, which you can get from Amazon. Um, and then this one is on the Sunshine Diet, which is my most recent one. So. And then really what we need to do after we try this today is to come to Southampton and try your mum's or your cooking. I don't know. Which one <laughs> would you say is better? Uh, well, mum actually makes the samosas. So they're actually called Mama Sheila's samosas. And she makes all the roti, so she does like 30 kilos of roti per week. Oh my goodness. She's, she's like hardcore. They're built differently, wow. the, the elders. She'd be able to bash the, um, the ginger biscuits. Easily. Easy. No problem. <laughs> um, and um, everything else is my, my recipe. Really awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. So there we have it. Are we going to be able to try these? Can we put them on the side and give people spoons? Yeah, definitely try it. And there we have it. Shalina Permaloo. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone.